Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for this wonderful day again, O oh God. Lord, even Lord, as we come boldly to your throne of grace, Lord, may you come into our hearts and our spirit this day and this time, O oh God. Father, we completely give our mind, our body, our hearts, our soul, our spirit to you this, up, this morning, O oh God. Amen. Father, I pray that Lord, only you can speak into our hearts, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, I just pray for your spirit. Yes, Lord, to anoint your words. Yes, Lord, let your words, the Father, become alive. Let your words become bread of life for us, that we may continue to live in your glory, O oh God. To live in your presence, O oh God. Forever, yes, Lord. Lord. We Amen. desire the presence of the Lord always to be with us, Lord. Though we feel yes. it, Lord, let yes. our faith understand that, Lord, you have never forsaken us, you have never left us, and you never yes. will, because you are our Father. Yes, Lord. You are your children. Hold on to that promise, Father. Thank you. Hold on to that promise, O oh God. Thank, Thank you, Father, Lord, for your enduring love. Thank, Thank you, Father, Lord. Lord. For your love, Lord. Thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, let's go to Genesis chapter ten. All right. So uh, those who are new, okay, uh, welcome. Yeah, we have started from Genesis chapter one, where we saw uh, chapter one and chapter two, where we saw the creation. Yeah, of God, and then uh, chapter three to chapter five, we saw the fall of man. Chapter six, we saw the dis the destruction of man. Yeah, through the flood. Yeah, and then we see chapter eight, the post flood, where Noah emerged out of the ark. Yeah, to want to build a new human race. For our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, today we are into chapter ten. Yeah, and today okay. we are going to the generations, the generations. Yeah, so we have seen generation after generation about sin, how sin is pursuing us, pursuing the human race. And we are always in a battle with sin, yeah, with our flesh, with our mind. And as long as we are in this body, we are continuing to fight. But praise be to God that God is the one who fights for us. Yeah, if we align our thoughts, our mind, our body, our spirit totally to Him. We will always have the victory. And you will see victory from this book of Genesis. You will see how God wins when we align to Him. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. We're going to see the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Yeah? So we know that Noah. Noah was someone that was thought to be the deliverer. Yeah, when we saw in the book of Genesis chapter 5, where Lamech named Noah, that Noah is the one that will bring rest to the earth. Because uh, since Genesis chapter 3, where the curse was pronounced over Satan, that there will be one, that will come to, to crush his head. Satan is always on the battle. And we Christians must always be on the battle. We cannot take things lightly. Yeah, we cannot take things lightly. Though right now, okay, we are already saved, but we are still in the army of God. Are you all in the army of God? Yeah? We are enlisted in the army of God. Like it or not, we are. Right, number one, 
we are to battle with our sinful nature. We are to battle with our sinful flesh. That is the first battle. If we can win that battle, yeah, then we will go to the battle of the mind. Then after that, the spiritual battle where you, you fight via prayer, via evangelism, the spiritual fight. Because the fight is not over until God says it's over. Yeah? So they all had very, very good hopes on Noah. Sorry, on, uh, yes, on Noah. Because uh, Lamech said that this is the one that will bring us out of our toil. Out of our toil. So everyone was thinking that Noah was the one. Because he was a preacher of righteousness. You know, he did everything what God wanted him to do. Build the ark. Yeah, brought the, his family into the ark. Brought even the things okay that were needed to populate the earth. Yeah, and also to sacrifice. Yeah, for the earth. All the animals were brought into the ark. And last week we saw that again, man can fail God, but God cannot fail man. Amen? Amen. But even, though, even though God failed, sorry, if the, even though Noah failed man, sorry, even though Noah failed God, God had all this grace and mercy for the human race. Yeah. And devil never, never stopped trying to disrupt again the genealogy or the DNA of humans. He did it once in Genesis chapter 6 where there were fallen angels that came and cohabited, right? And, uh, and have uh, married and have sex uh, with human women and that produced the Nephilim. But God destroyed the Nephilim. So, hallelujah, yeah, God won over Satan that battle. But in that battle too, God was not concerned only about winning the war. He's not concerned about winning the battle. But he was concerned about winning people. He was concerned about winning souls. That was for 120 years, God waited for these people to repent. But they did not repent. The Bible says that okay, their thoughts were evil continually. They did not want to retain God in their knowledge. Yeah, so they turned to idols, they turned to witchcraft, they turned to a lot of devilish worship, and we shall see that later. You will see throughout the book of Genesis, grace was already in place the day that human race failed God, the day that Adam and Eve disobeyed God, grace was there. But grace needed an atonement. Grace needed someone to come to die in place of sin. And we shall see that. Yeah. So we saw here that Noah gave birth to three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jacob. So, um, just uh, simply put, okay, Shem became the father of the Asian nations. All right. Ham, the African nations, and Japheth, the European nations. So out of these three came out the nations that we have today. Yeah. So Asia, we have a lot. We have China, we have uh, India, we have... Uh, uh, Indonesians, we have uh, Philippines and all this, all this, we all came from one man and that man is who? That man is Adam himself. And because of Adam, because of what he did, because of what he was deceived, yeah, 
we have to be paying for that price. But like I said earlier in our last uh, study, if you and I were Adam or Eve, I believe we would have not done any better. There should be no blame game on why and who did this to me and I. The Bible says that forgive. Right? Those of us who have that thinking, why am I in this kind of situation because of my four forefathers that did this? Well, whenever bad things happen, right? I ask this one question to them. Who is in control of this world? Is it God? Yeah. If God allow bad things to happen in your life and my life, then we should question God. Yeah, we should pick the blame on God. And sometimes people just stare blankly and say, hmm? am I to blame God? Well, when you blame your circumstances, you are blaming God. Because God allowed all things to happen for His good reason. Well, we may not understand everything, but just trust and obey that whatever things happen in our life, whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether it be sweet, whether it be bitter, yeah, it all all for our good. Because our Father knows best. Our Father knows best. Alright, so continuing on, yeah? Verse 2. So I'll just quickly read, because uh, there's a lot of names here. Yeah. So we saw that the sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Zavan, Tubal, Mesek, and Tiras. All of these bear very, very important names. Yeah, I will not go through all that. But why is all these things being said? Yeah. Do you remember Magog? Anyone remember Magog? What is Magog? Who is Magog? Or have we read something about Magog? Uh, where did you read this Magog, the name of Magog from? Ezekiel 37, 38. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Actually, you know, God has already shown us the future. You know, a lot of people, if you want to know about the future, just go to the Bible. Yeah, right. Ezekiel 36 to 38, right, will talk about the future. Yeah, we'll talk about Actually, Armageddon will talk about, you know, these um, countries that will come against Israel. So these names are here written for us to understand, right, the beginnings of these nations. And we shall see the dispersion of these nations in Genesis chapter 11. Alright, actually, I, I just I want to make some, uh, some uh, you know, uh, understanding, yeah. When we talk about Magog, I think Magog is cent Central Asia. Yeah. It is uh, Kazakhstan, Ubeskan, Ubeskan, Tajikan, all that Khan, yeah. <laughs> right? Kazakhstan, Tumasniskan. Alright. The Bible, when we talk about Russia, which I think is correct, okay, it is Rosh. R O. SH Rosh. Yeah. And uh, simply put, okay, we will see a lot of, of uh, uh, what you call that, the sons and generations of Japheth and also of Ham and also of Shem. All these will play their role, yeah, in the days to come or have replayed played their roles in the centuries past. Right? So we see in verse 5. By this were the owls of the Gentiles divided into the lands. Every one of them after his tongue, after their families and then in their nations. So here, we already see that the sons of Japheth, alright, 
are already uh, categorized right as Gentiles in the beginning also was already the segregation between Jews and Gentiles right so yeah when you read of Rosh all right he's talking about Russia yeah all right so we talk about Gomer yeah we talk about uh, to Gama, right? We saw the sons of Goma. All right, this one is and to Garma. This is talking about Turkey. Yeah, but I don't really want to go to all that because it's really very very long uh, understanding of history. Yeah, so I just simply tell you guys, okay? Since the sons of Ham were Cush, Misraim, Put, and Canaan. All right, so. We will put more emphasis on Canaan, yeah? Alright, so where is Kush? Okay, just for information's sake, yeah? Kush is our present-day Sudan, right? And Put is our present-day Libya, okay? And of course, uh, we don't have Persia here. Persia, if you can remember, yeah, it's talking about Iran, alright? So these are the sons of Ham. And uh, we know what are the sons of Shem. Shem is the, is the sons that came, that came out. The Hebrew, all right, the Israel um, nation. Okay, so now we have um, Asia. We we'll talk about Asia. We we'll talk about, okay, I mean, talk about Ham. We we'll talk about, you know, um, Africa, yeah, and Shem, we talk about Israel, eh? and uh, our countries that are connected to Israel. So, it seems that Cush begot Nimrod, verse 8, yeah, and began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, which we shall see later, Erect, Akkad, Kalne, all in the land of Shina. Alright. So, Babel, we know that, okay, it was uh, Babylon. Yeah. And then uh, Akkad or Iraq is called Uruk, one of the oldest cities sites known today. So we will not want to go there. What we want to know, okay, that all these are the beginning of the kingdom of the Antichrist. Yeah. When we see that he says Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord it's not meaning that he was for the Lord yeah there are older manuscripts that reveal that Nimrod was a head hunter in a sense okay that he hunted men yeah, he was hunter of men. That means he killed men. And that was Nimrod. And what was the name of Nimrod? The name of Nimrod means that he is yeah, a rebel. He is someone that starts revelation. He is, in short, the Antichrist. And today, we see his traits the spirit antichrist in this world today and the bible does judge this spirit the spirit antichrist okay that will be very prevalent yeah in babylon where is babylon we are not sure all right but according to what we understand from biblical history yeah babylon is where the river Euphrates flows through. 
and where the river Euphrates flows through, yeah, today it is Iraq. But do we assume that Babylon is a land or do we assume Babylon is a spiritual kingdom? Yeah, that is yet to be known, yeah. It can be both. Yeah. Right? But could it be that this spiritual kingdom will be in this physical land? We know that Babylon definitely is a spiritual kingdom. But where it resides or where it will be is still unknown. The Jephix, the J the Jephites or Jephix, okay, are what the people we call the Greeks. All right, the real Europeans, okay, in the Bible, we'll call them the Greeks. And do you know that what is their significance or their relevance to the Bible? The Greeks, all right, are the one that translated the Hebrew Bible to the Greek Bible, where today we have it and we call it the Septuagint. You see, every nation in this world has its purpose, has its wonderful purpose. All is already ordained by God how it should play in its time and its place. So we saw that Nimrod was a mighty hunter. Yeah? He hunted and he killed men that was against his kingdom. And today we see in this Antichrist age, those who oppose the Antichrist, yeah, they are also being opposed, they are also being persecuted. Some of them are also being killed. And we see this in missionaries uh, that go to foreign lands who still do not know Christ and they are beheaded, they are martyred. But does that mean that these people are wicked? Yes, they are. They are wicked because they still do not have, have not know Christ. That's why people we still need to go and love them. How our God Lord showed us mercy and how the Lord God showed grace to the people that was against him in the book of Genesis chapter 6 where the Antichrist was prevailing, where the devil was just having a wonderful gala time. God, grace, God gave grace and mercy to this generation for 120 years. And we shall see later in the books, in chapters to come, that God also grace, gave a grace to the Canaanites. Yeah? 400 years. 400 years before God says, it is time, it is enough. I will bring my deliverer. God always have this time span of grace and mercy. Today, even as we are in this modern age or these last days, God is still giving grace and mercy. And I believe that the age that we are living in, God has extended His mercy. We saw Genesis chapter 6, 120 years. Yeah, and then we see with the children of Israel, 400 years. Then God, there was another 400 years before Jesus came. And we call that, you know, the dark ages. God gave time for people to repent. Come after Christ, 2,000 years ago, God is still giving grace 
2,000 years. Don't you see how loving and graceful God is? Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you do not know our God, who He is, we are the saddest person in the whole world. Yes. God died for everyone. Not only the Jews, but for everyone. The only truth that we can get is from this book of life. These words of life. Words of wisdom. So, God says that from one man, one blood, came all nations. And we saw this, alright, in Genesis chapter 9, that through the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, yeah, all the nations populated. God, I like to again reiterate that God did not die only for certain people or certain race. God died for everybody, even for the wicked. Let's turn to the book of Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And he says that, They sung a new song. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to work. Thou art worthy to, to take the book, to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by your blood, out of every kindred, every town, every people, every nation. Hallelujah. Every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation. My brothers and sisters in Christ, God loves even those that oppose Him. God loves His friends. He God loves His enemies. That's why God says, love your enemies. That is the trait of God. Love the people that persecute you. Love them. Because they are your brothers and they are your sisters. They are made in the image of Christ. Yes, love. Thank you, love. Love. The people of different faiths. Love them. But love them in truth. God died for everybody. The Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims, whatever faith that they are in, God loves him. God loves them. And I'm so happy to receive a text message from my friend this morning. Not this morning, this afternoon. Because uh, I took opportunity to share gospel with him. I know that he was a very thick-headed guy, very into himself, you know. Yeah, did not, atheist, did not believe in uh, Christ and all that. But God put him certain certain situations in his life, okay, that made him see life in a different way. I believe, you know, God allowed him to be sick. God allowed him to be hospitalized. Yeah, but also God, you know, healed him. Not completely healed him. Yeah, he's still, he's still uh, in, in sickness. But all these things make him realize. And even as he's aging, beginning to understand, okay, the body is now getting weaker. He can no longer do what he was doing when he was young. And I praise God that today, he sent me a, a video of himself in a church. I'm so glad. I am very glad. Yeah. When I saw this, actually I, I, I was so happy. You know, I cried tears of joy. 
because all these years, the work was not in vain. Though every message, every SMS, every WhatsApp to him, he did not return. But God saw. Yes, thank you, Lord. Perseverance. That we want to see everyone come to Christ. Everyone. So never lose heart. Always believe God's promises. And God's promises are yes and yes and amen. And if God says that one is saved, your whole family shall be saved. Pursue this with all your heart and believe and pray for your loved ones. Because God did not do a mistake with you. You are the light and the salt in your family. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3 verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Alright, when it talks about Greek, it means not uh, the Jephites. Alright, it means the Gentiles. So there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither that is born nor free, neither that is male nor female, for you are all in Christ Jesus. For if you be in Christ, then you are of Abraham's seed, and the heirs according to the promise. You see, when we look at the word of God, we cannot simply take the word out of context, yeah? A lot of people, yeah, from the LGBTQ, LGBTQ, right, can take this and say, it's okay, you see, God says they are neither male nor female. But does that mean that? So you see, we are at the mercy of people who know the Bible more than us, but who have a different spirit. And this is what is prevalent in the church today. Praise the Lord, okay, you guys have come here to want to learn the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying that I know everything, yeah? But remember, if I any day go wrong from the teaching, yeah? Do not listen, okay, to, uh, to this uh, Bible study anymore. Yeah, alright? You need... To protect yourself you need to learn the bible for yourself there's no other way because the spirit antichrist is already here even when paul said it two thousand years ago it's already here and it is getting stronger and stronger and we the children of god are not aware and are bought into it are bought into it there's neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither born or slave, free or slave. God says everyone is equal in God's eyes. It's not meaning that, okay, oh, there's no male and there's no female. Then what happened in the book of Genesis when God created male and female? So you see, because of these people, that profess they are Christians, but they churn out deceptive teaching, deceptive knowledge, knowledge that does not come from above, yeah, but come from beneath, sensual, yeah, knowledge that are embodying self, exalting self rather than God. That is what we must be very careful of. The devil's doctrines have evolved. We have to be very, very careful. Very careful. Now, this is something okay that I say, you can listen to it, you can practice it, you don't have to, it's okay. I know that today, the devil is targeting children. 
at a very young age. Even cartoon series, you have to be careful what they are teaching. Schools in America, they're allowing different teachings, not biblical, coming into their classrooms. And I fear one day it will come to your nation. And I know it will. Because whatever comes from America will slowly be accepted by all over the world. Even today, the Christianity that we have, the teaching that we have, right? Some adulterated and we take it whole. I pity for those who always want to hear prophecy, who wants to hear from prophets, but they don't dig into the word. When you don't dig into the word and you hear false prophecies, you are digging your own grave. People want to be spiritual. They want to learn so many things. But they do not know that sometimes these things bring them to destruction. The Spirit Antichrist is alarmingly working all around the world in churches as well. Do not believe everything that you hear or that you see online. Hit my words, my children. Hit my words. Go back to the Bible. Be a barian. Continue to ask, continue to question if there's a doubt in your spirit, doubt in your heart. Continue. Do not swallow all things wholeheartedly because it will be unto your destruction. Today, we see that God loves all nations. We see that in the book of Revelation, where the church is, we see there are so many people of different race, of different language, of different tongues. And today we hear from famous pastors on the internet. Even in some Bible schools, that the church has replaced Israel. They call it replacement theology. And people who do not know the Bible will fall to that. But when we see from the book of Genesis, it is not so. And we will see from chapter 12, the promise that God gave to Abraham the seed that will come from the loins of Abraham. And who was the line of Abraham? He come from Shem. So it's very, very important for us to understand the word of God. Not only, that's why I, I, I am so, so, so agitated when people take the word of God out of context. Yeah. And in certain group chats, yeah, I will point it out. I'll point it out. I say, you know, so and so, I think, you know, this is out of context. Yeah. Read the whole context, what it says. Never take things out of context. Because you are not the author. You are not the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that taught the author what to write, and it has a message for itself. It's not for us to take partial or part of the Bible and say it that it means not. God says in the book of Revelation that if you add 
or dis or detract, subtract anything from the Bible, God will add or subtract things into your life or out of your life. God placed so much prominence on His Word. And His Word is the most important. If some of you don't have a Bible, get a Bible. Do not rely on digital Bible because one day everything will be lost. There will be no Bible online. Again, my, admonish, my advice to you all, whatever is modern, use it wisely. Not everything is what it seems. Chat GPT. Some of you are using it. Say, wow, so good, so good, wow. It can answer my questions, yeah. But how do you know that there are lies in it? Have you checked? People have asked questions about the Bible from Chat GPT. Some of it are not according to what the Bible says. So can you believe Chat GPT? Or do you believe the Bible? Or do you believe the everlasting living word of God? The devil is out there to confuse. To bring division in the church. I've always mentioned this before. Beware of mega churches. I repeat myself. Beware of mega churches. Because if your word is not deep enough, if your theology is not strong enough, you will still be children. Like I said before, ever learning but never coming to maturity. You know, this replacement th theology has been from centuries before. And who practices it? I will not mention people. Yeah? I'm telling you, okay, the Roman Catholics. They believe in replacement theory. Seventh-day Adventists, they believe in replacement theory. Please be aware of what your children are learning. Even in churches today, you put your little children under the care of Sunday school. It may be good, a good church. Yeah? But how do we know that the person teaching has a different understanding? The, the, the person teaching has a different doctrine. How do you know? We are placing our children in danger. I was telling someone, what is it so difficult? Yeah, that children and adults come together in the service itself, why is there segregation? We know that the Jewish children, they did not have children Torah books. They memorized scriptures. How they memorize for the adults, they memorize for themselves. And we are so clever. You know, that we was okay, we, I want my children to learn, uh, so I'm going to give them, okay, learn, you know, so that they can understand better. Yeah, I do not know. It could be good, it could be bad, because our intention is good. Today, the most prevalent thing that's going to hit our church today, I believe, and I'm hitting out hard, yeah, with some I was in... Uh, in certain groups, you know, and just giving this awareness, yeah, yeah, I, my message was deleted. 
yeah, from the group admin, supposedly to be a Christian. They do not know what they are doing. The Bible says that homosexuals cannot get into the kingdom of God. And today we hear over the churches, the pulpits, that you can be a Christian gay, a Christian homosexual. And the Bible says that, okay, those who have this kind of problem, they will, they will go to these kind of teachers and pastors and follow them because they feel safe, they feel accepted, they feel wanted. God died for the lesbians, for the gays, but they are not to be accepted for what they believe in or what they are practicing. That is wrong. We cannot affirm what they are doing. When we understand the Bible, when we understand the book of Genesis, when we understand the book of Joshua, because we do not know the deception of sin. The book of Genesis talks a lot about sexual sins. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because of sexual sins. The day will come when the world will become like Sodom and Gomorrah, the judgment will come. Please be aware of what you are following. They may start off good, but they will taper end and become antichrist. We do not know because we are sometimes deceived. The one man that I will point out, I may be wrong, yeah, but he is the one that says that homosexuals can go to heaven. And he recently passed away. Very great pastor, very great theologian. You know who that guy is? Charles Stanley. And now, his son, Andy Stanley, is also having a big mega church and accepting. Yeah? homosexuals into the church. We must be very careful what we are doing. Our intentions may be right, but it may be against the word of God. You know, sometimes when I see these people, I, I, I really uh, sympathize with them. You know, what they've gone through and how they become like that. Our heart goes up for them. But when God says it's sin, do not let sin enter into the church, we do not. Do not disobey God. How King Saul disobeyed God? He kept the spoils of the enemies for himself. Joshua was to eradicate the Canaanites. But he was deceived by his word to these people who deceived him, whom he gave his word that he will not destroy them. And today, we see this thing prevailing. What the sin of Canaan we saw last week but I did not go into that because the Bible did not say so. 
But those those of you may understand what that sin was. It is prevalent until today. Never let our emotions overtake us. Let the word of God guard our minds and our decisions. God knows best. God knows best. Alright, so we saw that Nimrod was the one that was carrying this spirit of Antichrist. He wanted to build a kingdom for himself. He opposed God. He wanted to build a kingdom for himself. But it will not last. And we shall see this in Genesis chapter 11. Yeah, when we will talk more about the Tower of Babel. Yeah. So, praise the Lord. Yeah, we are somehow in the covered <laughs> chapter yeah, 10. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And we'll be going to chapter 11. So that's why because I said, okay, these are two little things, okay, that I can say, so, you know. But this is what the Word of God says. God loves everybody. God loves Israel. But God loves us also. That's why God says, I will leave the 99. And I'll search for the one that's missing. And that missing is you and I. Amen. Praise the Lord. That missing is you and I. He never, never, never left us nor forsake us. Please, be so careful of your Walk with Christ. I'm sure every one of you is saved. But use your time wisely for Him. Do not be used by the devil. Do not just simply follow what the masses is teaching. Please be a barbarian. Ask, question, you will never go wrong. Amen? Okay, I'll pass the time back to Bernard. Or, uh, Julia, Julia. Julia, Julia. Okay. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you Pastor. <clears throat> Not for the wonderful sharing uh, while I was listening. I uh, my mind is running. Uh, first is in the beginning this year I have uh, made a, a target for myself that rooted rooted one in the foundation and uh, grow growing growing in maturity and bear fruits. I think this is most uh, most of the years. This is my resolution because uh, journey of faith. Is keep on growing uh, to for maturity. So just now you mentioned about that. Uh, you know, sometimes we we if we are not rooted in the word. Uh, I was like that also, uh, and uh, when uh, whatever whatever the pastor or the, the teacher or uh, they are teaching, we just we just accept accept. But uh, since uh, I think 2020, the, the shaking, uh, we believe the pandemic is a shaking and separation, the sheep Christian and the good Christian. So the shaking made me aware that uh, I myself have to study the word myself. And uh, whatever I listen, whether they call it themselves apostle or, or, or prophet, I don't take it er uh, everything into my spirit now because uh, just two years ago, 
while I was reading the Bi- uh, the Bible, one of the words, suddenly the words come to me like, Rima, you know, among you, Jesus said, you know, among you there is a false prophet and false teacher. It struck me, awakened me. So, that's why it makes me, I need to refer whatever I listen to the Bible. I need to refer to it, then only I can accept. So it can, it can become like, you know, I'm very really, uh, doubtful or whatever. I'm not too sure, lah, but as long as I, uh, uh, I I just follow the word of God. Lah. So that's why uh, I uh, in this season, I want to root it in myself. And uh, I spend uh, times, quite a lot of times in reading the Bible daily as well as uh, like, Pastor Mark, this kind of teaching, you know, verse by verse, I feel more safe to 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 learn instead of uh, here one verse, there one verse, uh, just like you uh, say, like take out a context or whatever. I'm not too sure. So, uh, uh, this is my uh, my myself, my own self experience for last two, uh, two three years, lah. So I believe that uh, God is awakening the church. To come to the word, basic. This is basic. The spiritual food. We got to eat our spiritual food. Even last time, the first uh, uh, MCO, the time I read, uh, I spent some uh, a bit, a fair bit of time in listening YouTube. One day also, I heard the rebuke from Holy Spirit. Don't waste your time. It, later, I realized that the, not all YouTube you can be listened. Sometimes it's a waste of time. Uh, so so I I let go. I don't go and simply listen. Even the messages also I don't go and listen. If I don't know the speaker, especially, uh, no doubt they are well known speaker or what. I don't go and uh, and uh, and uh, too much spend too much of my time there lah. So this is uh, my experience as well. Uh, so any any anyone want to share? Anyone want to share your view or your experience or? Uh, or any question before Pastor Mark uh, uh, leave us for the uh, his uh, his own chore? Huh? Yeah, I I just have to add something here also. That is true. Uh, what Pastor Mark was sharing, uh, what the Catholic are doing, what the in fact I'm not so you know last time I thought of putting my children in the Sunday school. Wow, it will be good, no? But that is true. Today is just awakening for me that. Yeah, what they are going to teach our children is so dangerous. So thank you for reminding uh, Pastor Mark. And uh, what I'm trying to share here is the Word of God is, um, and it's important that we have to choose the Bible. You know, when you go to the bookstore, you can just grab the Bible without knowing what's the contact inside. Because sometimes they are deceiving Bible, you know, and then we just read and then, we, we, we ourselves follow the wrong teaching. So I always say that in the beginning, you know, God made male and female. So when you are the male, forever you are the male. How can you, you know, married to, you know, a gay and then a homosexual, I don't know how, it, how the terms call, but this is all wrong, you know. Bible says female and male. When you are created as a male, forever you are the male. So you want to get married, you have to find a female. So you become husband and wife. And then the Bible says you will leave your, you know, as a father, we have to leave our children and then they got to stay on their own, you know, in one body. And these are all very important, you know. And today, you know, uh, 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 pastors are agree, you know, the hormone, same sex, you know. So this is wrong. So what Pastor Mark, you are very good, you know, uh, speak the truth. And we teach, we also teach the truth. And the truth will set us free, you know. So I always tell, you know, especially now, I think I believe God has uh, wanted to use me, you know. And at this end time, you know, preparing me many, many things, you know, in life. A worshiper, also I must have resources in life, you know, to reach out. You know, so I really want to thank God that whatever desire uh, in my heart when I was a young, young girl, you know, uh, since I think uh, childhood time, I always 
Uh, my eyes always end on the poor, the needy, you know, those uh, disabled children, people, old people. My heart desire is still there, you know, I uh, uh, want to care for these kind of people. But with this, uh, you need to have uh, strength, you know, and uh, calling, and also you must be truly committed, you know, like Pastor uh, Apostle Mark, Brother and uh, Julia were leaders here. Once you uh, committed, you must always be there, punctual to study the word, you know. You cannot say, oh, cannot come in. You know? So I'm, I just tell myself, I have to excuse myself for this moment. And people say charity begins at home. So I think I have to, you know, do my part in home. Maybe, you know, this is all long term, you no? Know? It's a long term calling. You know, if God take me home early, I will rest permanently, eternity with God. But as long we are still on this earth, having our breath here, you know, we just do whatever we can before God calls us home. Sometimes, you know, we are so tired now, so God, you know, I just want to rest with you. Sometimes it's really very, very tired now. Not enough time. 24 hours are so not enough for me. So the time just passing through so fast, you know. You know, but somehow we have so much of joy in our heart if we serve Him, you know, with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We do not know the strength come from where. So I know it's truly from the Lord. So the word, I think in Philippians or whatnot, or, or what, uh, if you can say, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So this song will be my, you know, Rima song, is it? I, I like to sing this song. The joy of the Lord, it is our strength. The joy of the Lord, it is my strength. You know, the joy of the Lord, it is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, so you can just laugh, no? ha, 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 ha. So when I sing this song, uh, everyone, everyone uh, will turn up to be very joyful and happy. You know? <laughs> So no complaint, you know, it's also all in the word of God, no complaint if you do things, you know. So the Bible teaching uh, is really, really good, you no. Know? So many times complain in our life, why I must born in this family, why I don't born in the rich family, why my parents don't love me, why uh, everything, you know, complain, complain. So today, Lord, I'm truly, I'm sorry for all the the, the things that I have done, you know, a showing anger, temper, you know, today, if we truly knows the Lord well, deep in our heart, you know, we really want to live a, a, a full, full life, you know, and we, as a believers, we need to carry the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, is it right? Galatians 5.22, you know, the nine fruits. This is very important as a child of God. So um, the word of God is sharpened like a double sword ages. It will pierce into your your bone, your what? Uh, that all sickness now, especially people who are suffering from cancer, you know, from any types of sicknesses today. If you say, please pray for me, my spirit today tell me. If you believe in your heart uh, that if you call for people to pray, you already heal. So sometimes I just uh, advise uh, people who are suffering from any illnesses, then they just uh, uh, say, Sister, can you pray for me? I believe that if she or he believes in the heart uh, that through prayer, uh, the person can be healed. So it's already done in heaven. Where two agree, it's already done in heaven. So today, we as a believer today, we have to operate our spirit man inside to be um, very, uh, how to say, uh, uh, have strong faith, you know, because the authority, Jesus said before he left this earth, the authority has been given to you. So go forth you know, and make disciples and heal the sick. Uh, uh, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So I claim it. Now I really claim this strength, this uh, same spirit that God has given to me. I 
activate the spirit man inside me and I really want to see people get healing. Even sometimes I tell myself uh, I want to see the the dead the dead the dead uh, to rise up, you know, and only God will be, you know, glorified, you know, to manifest his power today. You know, if you really can see the miracle that what Jesus has done 2,000 years ago, he raised Lazarus after four days, after staying smelly. But Jesus said, it's not my time. When Mary and Martha call him, not my time. You know, my time has not yet come. So today, you know, we say, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. People still, eh, uh, yeah, how many times, even my father was saying the same thing now. Uh, how many when I was a young boy, now my father is 82, uh, he still don't want to come out. You give me a million dollars, I will never come to the Christian faith. So it's okay, I said, uh, I pray for you. But now at least he's opened up for prayer from the Christian <laughs> friends of mine. So Lord, you touch my father, his name is Francis Lim, you know, and all my other siblings, we have five more siblings who are still, you know, and all. A lot of you. So, Lord, I just want to ask the Holy Spirit you know, to touch all my family members and all my family friends today. You know, they, they thought that I'm lost. You know, they are praying for me very, very hard. You know, they're thinking I'm lost. But in fact, now we, are, we thank God that we are so close to God, intimacy with God. You know, that. Um, only one day, you know, if you truly you love God, you will seek Him with all your heart. I think it's in Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Uh, 11 is He has a plan, and then 12, 13, 14, until 15. You, you seek Him, you find Him with all your heart, uh, then you'll be able to find Him. So I really <laughs> love the Word of God. So I just want to thank you, um, the Holy Spirit, that he truly guided me. You know, if you don't have the Holy Spirit to guide you on the Word of God, when you read, uh, you are actually reading like a storybook. No? It's so sad when I was uh, in the Catholic faith. Uh, I'm very sorry, I'm not condemning Catholic uh, uh, faith, but just that we need the Holy Spirit. Everyone, because God has uh, uh, given us the Holy Spirit before He leave this earth, so we, we we have to we need him every day. We need him to guide us, to lead us our path to walk. You know, sometimes I buy things so I have to ask him you no. Know, because sometimes I really blur you know, on this earth you no. Know, I really do not know how to move on this earth. Only at the other the spirit side. So they say that you will not yet die, you know, you're still on this earth. You know. So that's why they say we are not we are in this world but we are off the world. So in Romans twelve, you know. You know, we could not conform, you know, this, this uh, one and two. Uh, we live our body as a living sacrifice. So all the word uh, is so good, you know. I'm so want to thank God, you know. And I so thank to Sister Joyce. Are you there, Sister Joyce from Malacca? He actually from, from KL. So yeah, just... actually, uh, they are latecomer like Sister Joy, Kimberly, welcome you. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see you more often. And yeah. uh, even Victor also come uh, later. But uh, now, actually, we have a prayer. Like, before we have prayer, I would like to ask Pastor Ma. Uh, uh, just now, you mentioned about the Nimrod. Nimrod, the spirit of Nimrod is the Antichrist. We know that the Antichrist is at work. At work, huh? whether maybe it's not in the family or in the church. And uh, last night only, I have a uh, sister told me that is uh, is uh, against the Christianity. That means that he wants to draw the children, the family, the whole family out from the Christianity. So I believe this is the Nimrod spirit at work. So can we how can we pray? You know how can we pray for this? Is it that we had to? Uh, <laughs> Uh, to uh, can you the spirit of uh, Nimrod or Nimrod. Nimrod spirit? <laughs> Are you there, uh, Pastor Mark, or whoever can uh, want to uh, 
can can uh, answer this question. If not, then we continue for our prayer next week only. Uh, Matt after Matt answer because next week next week also talking about the Genesis eleven ah uh, Genesis eleven is for the next Anyone can feel free to pray as well as uh, is there any prayer request? Oh yeah yeah this uh I was uh texting this uh, Esther Wong Esther Wong I was inviting her to come in then she told me she cannot because she got this uh weakness. We are able to, able to connect back to your. Can you hear me? Yes, can you can you can you can you? Yeah. All right. Just now, just now, yes. I was asking about the Nimrod, 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 because Nimrod is a descendant of Kush and Kush yes. from Ham, because Nimrod uh, is the greatest warrior. The, the only thing, thing okay, is maybe deal with people, right? I think uh, it's a two-pronged uh, approach. Lah. Number one, we need to love them, lah. right? And uh, speak the truth in love. And at the same time, we can only intercede and pray for them. We cannot argue with them. Lah. Unless uh, you know, they're open to discussion, they want to listen, I think it's good. If not, uh, everything will fall to deaf ears. Anyway, everything God has His purpose, yeah, in His time. So, never what we see in front of us cloud the promises of God. We always see, yeah, by sight, but not by faith. We must need to see things uh, through faith and eyes of God, and continue to pray. And plead with God. I always uh, like to model, okay, what Abraham did, you know, for the children uh, of Sodom and Gomorrah. Always continue to plead, yeah. And uh, actually, prayer is something very, very subjective, lah. Okay, it's very personal. And uh, it, it depends how the Lord teaches you how to pray and what to pray. Yeah, and that is uh, really you know, having a closer relationship with God, then you understand, you know, what to do, when to, when to uh, bind. So, it, it's a different story. La. <laughs> okay, I don't really have, know how to go deep into this yeah it's always led by the holy spirit but the most important thing is you know prayer is most important yeah if you want to bind the the spirit as well okay you may yeah there are some teachings that says okay you don't you don't bind you ask god to bind you're, you're not god and all this kind of stuff yeah but uh from my understanding from what god has been teaching me yes okay we can yeah, when god tells you to do so yeah, so a lot of teaching, a lot of teaching about that, so we cannot dip into that. But I think the most important thing, the most effective thing is to pray and uh, ask God, Lord, please open their eyes that they may see, you know, they are going the wrong way. Yeah, that's the most important thing that we can do for them. Yeah, other than, you know, going to spiritual warfare, uh, that's another topic itself. <laughs> really not talking though. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, Julia, I really cannot answer your what do you call that now? Your question at this time. Yeah. But the only thing I can tell you is just pray for them. Keep them in prayer. Yeah, because uh, we do not know what are the spirits that are behind it all is. So if God gives you uh you know the specific uh spirits that are behind then you can you can, uh, you know, speak to that spirit, cast it out. Uh, right. So that is I'm talking about in the in the spirit, yeah. Uh, not uh, what do you call that in the spirit, no? You know, behind the the person that that is uh, doing all this uh, devilish stuff. Yeah. You now casting people, the spirit out of people is a different question, huh? It's a different. It's a different thing.
that's another topic for itself lah. So I think we don't want to go so deep into that. So just pray lah. Just pray, okay, that uh, they will come to know Christ. They will see their own foolishness. I know that because uh, my mom was one of that. Mom. When I was, became Christ, she was like so fixated. She became really crazy. Yeah. And then uh, she she blocked my communication yeah, with my brothers and sisters. Uh, my brothers, rather than sisters, uh, my brothers. I, te- I practically don't have any communication with them for a few years. Yeah, she cut off every every communication that I have with my brothers. <laughs> That's the spirit of Antichrist. And do you know that when I when I went back, uh, you know, she disowned me as a as a son and the spirit was talking through her. The spirit was saying again, I know, he says, because I came back, uh, you know, after she know that I became Christian, she said, why do you come back? You know, and uh, when she was saying that, right, when I, even before I entered my house, I already saw the spirit, okay, that was in the house, there was a strong man. And I, I knew how to bind the strong man. So when I went in, my mom, you know, uh, she was, uh, she was trembling, right? And then she put her hands under her feet, you know, and never, I don't think a mother will do that to the son, you know? Just imagine, uh, she was trembling, uh, then she put, the, because of the trembling, like she put the trembling hands uh, under her feet and said these words, Why do you come back? Now, so these are all very spiritual things. Uh, they are very spiritual things. So you want to talk to me about a few things? I've been there. I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So it's not only by the word, but also by experience. But never go by experience. Uh, go by the word of God. So, yeah, she actually uh, you know, stopped every communication uh, between myself and my, my brother because the devil knows that, okay, I may win them to Christ. Yeah, but it's a matter of time that I will see them, you know, together in a family of Christ. Amen. I believe, okay, the promises of God, if one is saved, the whole family shall be saved. So nothing will defer me. You know, even today, uh, my younger brother is a Muslim, right? Even today, my youngest brother is a devout, uh, Tao, uh, I would say a Buddhist, right? He went even to India to do meditation and all this kind. And now, now you know, even uh, you know, doing great charity work. But I believe that he will come to Christ because I believe Amen. my father. What is and I want, you all, I want to encourage all of you to believe that. Do not see in the natural. See in the supernatural. Yeah? Believe in the supernatural. And that's where you see victory. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. Uh. Thank you for sharing, Master Mark. Uh. So now we know you more and more. Uh, that's just how you just share uh, with us uh, about your two brothers. Uh. So, yeah, so every, I believe uh, many of us are struggling, uh, but we, we struggle, but I mean, there are problems in our own family, each one of us, uh, so we just need to continue to pray uh, for each one of us. Even like Esther Wong asked her to join, he said, uh, cannot, uh, I got the Itchy, but attacking me, her in the legs, no? the two legs so itchy. So we'll pray for her. Pray for this uh, Esther Wong. And she, she, uh, her phone is out also. Her handphone. That's why she uh, couldn't join us. Huh? So I know a man uh, who was a born Christian, eh? a born second generation Christian. So was brought up. Uh, in a very uh, devoted family, Christian family, brought up, brought up, uh, was trained, was a uh, teacher, huh? because the parents were devoted Christians. Then uh, was a uh, trainer in the uh, in the Bible, everything. Huh? Uh, somehow, when she became uh, a lawyer, huh? 
suddenly he changed. So he was attending the church then he became a gay. He became to uh, have a, a liking for men. Eh? So the church he attended uh, were against the gay. Eh? So he left the church. He left the church and become wayward. Eh? Wayward. So we need to pray for these sort of people. Eh? Of people because like just how much share eh, there are some churches who accept kingdom city i think they accept i feel uh, correct me if i'm wrong kingdom city and uh, i just found pastor mentioned charles standy eh, just passed away <laughs> actually i also don't want to know uh, but somehow someone was posting some youtube so just some pastor also share eh, about that he uh condone gay, homo, all these things. So we really need to pray for these people that spend homo, huh? so that God will... Yeah, can I talk about Charles Stanley? Uh? Charles Stanley, yeah. Uh? So actually before he uh, passed away, right, uh, mm -hmm. being uh, the one that will take over will be his son, Andy Stanley. Uh? Mm -hmm. Andy Stanley is uh, very um, profusely, like, you know, accepting mm -hmm. gays and uh, mm -hmm. into the so everything has been set up like you know the father has already said it yeah there are so many followers and then now his son even his own church he said they will merge together so you have a big church that will be embracing this kind of doctrine we have to be very careful we love them but not their sin all right we have to tell them hey, it is wrong you know you have to fight against this desire yeah. Yeah. Uh, now we see the Bible already stated there. See when there is a true spirit of God, yeah, sin will will, will flee the place. Feel will sin will feel uncomfortable. You won't feel comfortable there. You know, if let's say you are doing something wrong, you will feel the Holy Spirit will convict you. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then something is wrong. If the church doesn't have the Holy Spirit, something is wrong. If the church doesn't convict sin, something is wrong. Mm. The Spirit of God is not in that church. Mm. Yeah. So then we will pray. Eh? We we'll just pray along this line. Later we, we can pray for the nation. We can pray for the churches. We can pray. We will pray for family. Uh, three items. Eh? Family, churches and the uh, <coughs> the, the nation. Eh? So we we'll just pray. We we'll just pray. Father, we I want to bring uh, Esther Wong for you, Lord God, that uh, she's facing so much of problem. Oh, Father Lord, we just, just want to, to cast it out in the name of Jesus. So, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that as children of God, we will have a victory. We will live healthily, Lord, nothing, oh God. Even the enemy will not touch us because we are covered by the blood. So, Father, I pray for Esther, Lord God, even right now, Lord God, that you uh, remove the itchiness of blood. That is attacking her, Lord, causing her so much pain. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you remove, Lord, heal her, Lord. If there's any sin in her life, oh Father, Lord, I ask, Father, Lord, we just uh, pray, oh God, that she be able to repent, oh Father, and forgive her, oh God, and come back to you, oh Father. Not even the handful, oh God, she has been repairing, repairing the handful, oh Father, I pray, oh God. Lord, that we need to be, to be so real. We need, we need to just walk closely. We need just to love you, oh God. Because if we love you, oh God, you love us. Because we are your children, God. And we have been promised, oh God. You have told us to not worry. You ask us to look at the birds who feed them. You ask us to look at the flower who clothe them, oh God. So, Father, we just want to come before you, oh God, by faith, oh God, believing, oh God. Whatever we ask, even as to agree, O oh God, that you will do it. So even in this group now of uh, 13, we want to believe, come together in the name of Jesus. We agree together that Esther will be healed even right now, Lord. Heal. Amen. Heal. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Our Abba Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the authority. Blessing all belong to you, Lord. Abba Father, we want to uphold the church of the all of the, all the whole world. Lord, we know that at the end time there are seven churches. Two you did not rebuke. Five they are rebuked uh, rebuke by you. Oh Lord, we forgive. We want to stand on behalf of them or the church that uh, lost the uh, first love and the live one church, the dead church, as well as a compromising church, compromise the sin and also corrupted. They are living the church, that living in the sin and corrupted by the sin, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness. Lord, forgive us, Lord. Forgive the body, Lord. Forgive the church, Lord. You are ever forgiving God. You're slow to anger, full of mercy, full of grace. Your covenant keeping God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord. Remember the new covenant that have made through Jesus Christ with us. We are all your body. All nations belong to you. You create the heaven and the earth. All nations is belong to you. You love every nation. No doubt the darkness cover the nation and all people. But your when your light comes, your light comes to the nation. The nation's hearts will turn back to you, Lord. We pray that you will work through mightily through your word, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, anoint each one of the people with your love, peace and joy, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, oh Lord. Lord. Send your angelic host, send the dream and vision for them so that they can know that Jesus is the only way, the truth, the way and the life. No one can come to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Let the heart turn back to you. O oh Lord, may you give them, show them the kingdom of God. Kingdom of heaven is near. Kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let them repent. Let the church repent. Let the nation repent. We want to I want to outpour Malaysia as well, whether Malay, Chinese. Indian or other foreigner in Malaysia, Holy Spirit, I know you love, you love Malaysia. You you want to bless Malaysia. I declare that Malaysia will be sheep nation. Malaysia will bless the Christian. Malaysia will bless Israel. Malaysia will bless those people, the country, other country. Oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you for loving Malaysia. Thank you for forgiving yes, Malaysia. Thank you for chosen us in this, this gate to wait for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Malaysia shall reign with Christ. Malaysia yes. shall be overcome. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Thank yes. you, Lord, for the blessed hope of your calling, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your richest inheritance of glory in Malaysia, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ, yes, Amen. Amen. Pray for the pray for the migrants, uh, migrants in Malaysia. There's so many of them, uh, the Indonesian, Filipino, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Vietnamese. So many of them. Uh. So Father, we thank you for Malaysia. Thank you, Father Lord. That there's so many. Migrants, Lord, in this country, oh Father, Lord, we came here, Lord, for the purpose. We came here, Lord, to uh, look for greener pasture, Father. Father, just look at the Yama migrant children. So many of them, oh Father. So many, Lord. And some, Lord, don't have uh, their orphans. Some have only a mother. So, oh God, so, Lord, we just pray for them, oh God, even these uh, children, young children, Lord. They, they are here and they need to go to school and who is teaching them. So I pray, O oh, Father, for this uh, 
children for the form of this uh, Myanmar pastors or Myanmar leaders, Lord, who are starting this school, who are having this school to teach these uh, children, oh God. So, Father, Lord, thank you, Lord, we just pray for more workers, oh God, for this, uh, for more teachers, Lord, to teach uh, these uh, children, Lord, we just want to pray, Lord, even for funding, Lord, uh, funding, Lord, for these children, or they need funds, oh Father, especially as uh, I see the Myanmar children, oh Lord, God, we, we, we pray, Lord, for the, uh, the, the, the hearts of the, the people here, or uh, local people, or any, any uh, philanthropies, or any good hearted people who are able to uh, sponsor, Lord, the children of God, the Christian, not even as uh, they are going to be taught, oh, Father, in this uh, Christian school. So we pray, O oh, Lord, for this. Uh, Children, for these children of God, uh, we love for them all the children of God, and children of God. So we pray, Father Lord, that you start for more workers, please for more people, Lord, who are fun, oh Lord, uh, these are uh, people in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, hey. Mary, are you there? Hey. Okay, Okay, uh, can you pray for the, the, the for those uh, uh, bondage in the LGBT? Father, we can only ask for your mercy, Father. Can we be fall in reverence or before you, Father? How about we tremble before you because you're such a holy God. Father, forgive them for they don't know what is they are doing. By mercy, but there's still time. About that, you will send your word and warn them in one way or another. Father, you know every soul, everyone by name, even our hairs are numbered. But we ask for your divine intervention upon these lives. Yes, Lord. You're blinded. Please, uh, please refrain uh, while I'm praying. I can't hear, can't hear what I'm praying. But we ask for your mercy to intervene directly, divinely, to each and every one. For it could be because their wrong thinking patterns that were influenced, that they were blinded by the evil one about we us, and we come against that of the evil one, and you remove the blindness from them, Father, that we see, expose the lies of the enemy, expose each and every one of it, those foul wicked spirits, in the name of Yeshua. Amen, amen. Remove them from the snatch of the devil, Father, where there's still time. Oh God. Yes, Father, I ask that those around them who are wise, who have godly counsel, who are truly the ones to fear you, Father, who are intimate with you, that they speak boldly and that they will, they will reach out to them, Father, to walk back in the ways of God, in the ways um, that you have ordained through your word. We really want to come against all those uh, doctrines of devil, those the spirit of deception, Father, we come against it in the name of Yeshua. We plead the blood of Yeshua upon each and every one of us, those of us who are called to even intercede and uh, pray for them, God. Oh Lord, pour out your spirit, for you say in your words, and these last days you will pour out your spirit upon all flesh, so that all may know you, that you alone have the words of eternal life. Salvation, salvation belongs to you through Yeshua, our Savior. So we want to pray for each and every one of them, Father, that these precious souls that belongs to you, God, yes. we know that it is not impossible. For with you all things are possible. And all we can do right now uh, is to pray for them. And even among us, um, whether it's our family or friends or um, those who 
are in, are in contact of, uh, with us. Father, we pray for your wisdom. We pray for your boldness. We pray for opportunities, Father, to even sow the seeds um, of your gospel into their lives. Thank you, Father, for praying, for, for, for letting us pray, for hearing our prayer, Father, for this is what we desire to see souls being added into your kingdom, Father. Plunder hell so that heaven will be populated. And more so, so Lord, hallelujah. Victory belongs to you, Yeshua, for in your holy name and your precious name, in your victorious name, Almighty Yeshua, we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, and Priscilla. Priscilla, Priscilla. Unmute, yes. Priscilla. Yes. Priscilla, okay. Because just now you are, I heard you talking about your sibling. Uh, I, I got eight now as a sibling. Eight sibling. No? I'm the nine one. Uh, I'm the, we got, I got nine uh, sibling in my family. Uh, mm. I'm the only one safe. Uh. So eight of them uh, are still long. now. Uh, still not safe now. So after hearing, mm. so we need to pray up for one another because you also see five of your sibling. Also. So you pray for this one family that our sibling can be saved. Even Mark also, huh? Mark, that's how he just mentioned he opened, huh? that his brother is a Muslim, one brother, his younger brother is a Buddhist. So you see, you know, so sometimes huh? we really we struggle huh? in this area. But we have to claim the word of God saying that uh, one safe, all be safe. Are huh? uh, you pray? Amen. Islam. Okay. Father in heaven, we thank you for. This time, we thank you for this wonderful time that we gather together in one accord, unity, in the same spirit, that we pray together with our brothers and sisters here, and we agree with one another that we are here to pray you know, for all our siblings, yes, our friends, and also pray for those who still do not know you, not only our own sibling, and uh, all the foreigners are here. My yes. spirit always tells us that, you know, God, we are precious. All, every soul are precious in the eyes of God. So, Lord, we know that you are more concerned for every soul, Lord. So, Lord, here we pray that you know, with all my brothers and sisters here, we agree with one another that you pray, that you touch as we pray right now, Holy Spirit, you touch each and every one, every one of them, Lord. Yes. Including all our children as well, you know, not only knowing you, not only, we, we must only know, want them to come to have the intimacy with you too, Lord. Yes. This is not easy to go into heaven, you know, as like the needle go into the 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 elephant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. To so, yes. So Lord, it is not easy even today, we ourselves, you know, whether we can make it or not. But Lord, we will try here, Lord, to to get into uh heaven. So Lord, hear our prayer, our sincere prayer from our heart that we truly, you know, asking uh, for forgiveness, you know, uh, of all our sins, knowingly or unknowingly hurting you, you know, doing things unpleasing to you. Lord, please forgive us. So, O oh Lord, hear our sincere prayer, asking for your favor to touch you know, like Brother Bernard said, he got eight more siblings. You know, I do not know Julia. I'm a Apostle mm. Mark. You have your brothers who are Muslim and also a Buddhist. So I know many are here still praying for their loved one. So Lord, here we are. Yes. We are sincerely praying, you know, asking for your favor to touch every mm. one of us. Yes. Touch every soul. You know who are your children. We do not know, but we know that everyone on this earth, you know, we are your children. But Lord, we are sorry that, you know, 
we do not know you. But you know us. We know that before in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, before we conceive in the mother's womb, Lord, you have already chosen us. So we are the most blessed one on this earth, Lord, to come to know you, you know, intimacy with you. You know, so Lord, we are really, really blessed regardless of how much challenges, how much storms and thunder in our life we have gone through, but we still make it, we still can overcome all these challenges and we do not want to blame anyone, you know, to, to uh, have doubt in any things in our life, Lord, because we are the chosen children, because we know that Jesus when you come to this earth, you have no place for you to lay a sweet child. You have to born in the uh, uh, yeah the manger. Yes, so smelly, and who we are to claim you know, that we are not blessed. We are more blessed than Jesus Christ. So Lord, we thank you, Jesus Christ, for you are our mentor. You know to 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 look to you. You know, we do not to, we do not want to look to men, but we just want to look to you, Jesus Christ, that we truly on this earth we want to walk the way how you walk, to heal the sick, you know, to share the gospel, you know, in uh, I think in uh, Romans eight, uh, Romans Romans one sixteen, uh, do not be ashamed of the gospel. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. So the gospel. You know, it's like God said, we do not have to be ashamed of the gospel. So just share with anybody when we meet the stranger. You know, this is our duty today, Lord. So Lord, let yes. all your believers, especially in this uh, Zoom meeting, in this fire glory, Lord, you rise our spirit that wherever we go, whoever we meet, we need to be friend with them and humble ourselves. You know, take the contact number and then share the love with them. Then later on, you know, we can share the gospel, how Christ would in share our testimony, you know, how before I know the Lord, how before I born again. So Lord, this is what you want us to be on this earth, Lord, to share. So Lord, let us be the light and the salt in this earth, Lord, mm -hmm. especially also in our family. So I know that our, my sibling, my relatives are watching me and my family. So Lord, we have to live right with you, you know, share, um, living how you talk, how you act, you know, in this, in this uh, days, Lord. So Lord, we know that we have not much time on this earth, Lord. So as long our breath is here, oh Lord, help us and give us strength in our daily life to carry our duty, you know, to do the, the 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 will of God that you want us to do. So Lord, it's not easy to say this, but Lord, with you, with your strength, I know that all of us can make it. So Lord, I thank you that you have brought us together in this manner, in this uh, virtual uh, uh, thank you for this technology again, you know, that we can come for free. Even Pastor Mark also didn't ask for any uh, 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 money, you know, to, to, to join this uh, Bible study. So we are really, really blessed, you know, in life, you know, whether your choice, whether you want to live your life for Jesus or you are just like become a lukewarm. And I know in Revelations, Revelations 3 verse 16 says now we have to be hot you know on fire for God if you are lukewarm Christian like now I think everyone three three quarter of believers are lukewarm and they will warm it out God hates the lukewarm they will warm it you out they will spit you out so Lord this word are really really you know awakening for the true believers so Lord, if we are the believers, we have to be hot for you, you know, on fire for you. Uh, Holy Spirit, you know, come and touch each and every one of us here, Lord. And by next week, Lord, you will bring more people to come to know you 
And to know you is to know the Word of God. All these are asked in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Priscilla. You quoted very well. Romans one sixteen. It reads, uh, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone. Amen. Our siblings. He believes first to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And he put the uh, Revelation 3.16 very well. It was a letter written to the church in Laodicea. Uh, because the church there are uh, lukewarm, neither hot nor cold. So I am about to speak you out of my mouth. Wow. Yes. So this is a very uh, powerful uh, verse. Oh, yes, you have to believe. Uh, 